Hello everybody and welcome to another Adobe Live here at Behance. We have a really great session for you today as we have an all-star leading ladies cast. Um, I really want to say a really warm welcome to Julia, an uh, amazing photographer from Eastbourne, which I'm very happy about, of course. Welcome, Julia. Hello. <laughs> Hello. I can't wait to get into it today. And of course, we have another presenter on the on the call today, another Adobe, Adobe Live host. Uh, Natalie, welcome. Thank you so much. I hope you all you're doing well. Oh, we are doing well. And it's so good to be here today. It's a rainy day here in the UK. And this session will definitely brighten our day and warm our hearts because we're going to be looking through some wonderful photography um, and so you're going to see some great tips about how we edit some amazing photos um, and what's great of course is that we're chatting live in Behance so get your questions in today for Julia. I can see so many people back in the chat it's really great to see everyone again so hey to Sandrine, hi Andreas, Gareth's back in the chat, I saw Sean in there, Sean you were the first in today uh, and Sanjana of course so we're all going to be chatting in Behance so definitely get the questions in. That's behance.net forward slash live. Um, Julia, please tell us a little bit about you and what you're from and, and what it is that you do. Uh, yeah, hi, I'm Julia. Um, I live on the south coast of the UK in Eastbourne, um, which is not so sunny today. We have a reputation for being the sunniest town in the UK. Um, I photograph mainly interiors and products for work, um, but I also have lots of personal projects on the go, which tend to be a bit more uh, landscape and floral. But anything really, Bad. photography. <laughs> Oh no, it's good. And your work is amazing because we, we're going to go through your portfolio. We'll also see some of the work on Instagram. And so um, it'll be, you know, great to, to get in and show people everything that you do. And um, of course, Natalie, you are from Off, uh, from Off Festival. And so you've got an interest, of course, in communications and I think Lightroom as well, right? Yes, so uh, I'm the communications director at the festival and I take care of all the visual contents actually. Uh, and besides that, I actually have a strong passion in photography. So I'm so excited to see Julia's work and actually, you know, throw in some questions. Um, and yeah, I've, I, I'm, I'm a personal uh, Lightroom user. So I'm also looking forward to see some technical tips from Julia. Um, and yeah, I just, uh, I'm so excited to hear everything. Good. Oh, it, it, it's good to have us all here. And the, one of the best things about Adobe Live is that you pick up so many different things from people's processes and everyone does things in a slightly different way. And it's so good to see that expertise. Uh, so, Julia, let's jump straight in. Um, where would you like to begin today? Portfolio or Instagram? Uh, so let's go with portfolio first. Um, so this is this is on my website. This is just a, a small selection of work that I've done recently um, over the past year or so. Um, I'm having trouble with my scroll. There we go. So as I say, mainly products and locations. Um, there's a few bits. I have a studio in the garden, so I tend to use that quite a lot for uh, photo shoots for clients. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think you can see sort of my style is fairly light and bright. Um, I like to have a little bit of color in there, maybe slightly desaturated. Um, and then I think if we um, pop over to my Instagram, I have um, a slightly different look over here. This is my more of my personal work rather than business. Um, so it tends to be sort of local, um, landmarks, scenery, this is a National Trust property, um, florals, um, I have a particular fascination with wildflowers, it's been a long-term photo project, so yeah, there tend to be quite a lot of those on my Instagram. I love it, and the colours that you have there, everything is very, um, very British, it has a real British feel to it. I th well, that's probably fairly unavoidable since that's where I am most of the time. Um, <laughs> there's an awful lot of local on here. I d there's obviously bits of travels interspersed as well, but a lot of this is actually taken in Sussex. Mm. Um, I'm really quite passionate about Sussex. I love it here. They think we have an awful lot to offer to people. So yes, most of it, there's a little bit of London there and a bit of Essex, but most of it is actually in Sussex recently. Yeah. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> you go, Natalie. No, like one of the things that I also noticed in, in your work, Julia, is that, you know, you use these amazing filters that you can set the mood right. Like you look at the photo and you're like, okay, I really want to be there right now. So 
I guess you know we will be talking about this further, but I believe that this is something that you take uh, that you consider during editing your photos, right? Absolutely. So, I mean, I've spent years on Instagram. I've been there for about eight years now. So curating a gallery that works together and that draws your eye in is something that I feel quite strongly about. Um, images that sit well together, even if they're quite different subjects uh, and the ways that you can make them sit together. I find, I find that fascinating. I've probably spent more time editing than anything because that's how you can sort of draw everything together. You can make them sit happily depending on the edits. Fab. And, and Sandrine says in the chat, any tips on light uh, lighting, greatly received. And that's something that you'll be showing us today, right, Julia? You've got yeah, uh, a couple yeah. of projects. Absolutely, yeah. So, I mean, I, I tend to work with natural light as much as possible. Very rarely use any kind of studio light, even on the still life photographs. Um, but it depends on what, can you, are, are you able to tell me what kind of um, photograph you're interested in the lighting? Is it scenery? Is it still life? Is it, because obviously the light's very different. I like a cloudy day for um, architecture. I like a sunny day for landscape. Um, but that first and last light of the day, I find easiest to photograph the golden hour light. Uh -huh. um, and for still life photography, I like a cloudy day. So it's learning to work what kind of light on what day. Yeah, it's so, um, I think Sand um, Sandrine, let us know in the chat. Oh, still life, she says, still, still life, life mainly. Mm. Cloudy days, cloudy days. And your proximity to the light can have a very different effect. So, um, I mean, if you look at the photographs I've got on the screen at the moment, the middle one at the bottom, I'm very close to the light source. So it's quite bright and evenly lit. And the one to the right of it, of the flowers on the table, I'm actually a little bit further away from the light. So there's this excellent depth of shadow behind the subject. The subject's in the light, the flowers have the light sitting on them, but the background is more in the shadow. So you get this contrast. So yeah, playing with your position near the light can make a massive difference to the photograph. Of course. What Oh, sorry, Natalie. What's your favourite thing to photograph, Julia? Because as you said, that your portfolio has different images to your Instagram. So you've got very those. different. I, so mm. I like everything. I like a really good interior. But actually, if I could only photograph, oh gosh, I couldn't choose one thing. It would have to be the flowers in the fields. Mm. So um, I do love a summer field with either a crop or a wildflower in it. Um, and then the still life photographs. I really enjoy um taking still life photographs mainly because i like playing with the camera settings and seeing how they affect it and again playing with the light it's more obviously you can control a still life so you know it's a really good way of learning your photography well and what camera do you use a mixture so my main camera is a Nikon D810 DSLR um, and I up until earlier this year I only had one lens on it um, and now I have two I have a wide angle lens and I have the um, I think it's 24 to 70 is on it most of the time and then I have a 16 to 35 millimeter lens which I use for interiors um, but there's also, um, include, actually, the photograph that's on screen at the left now, I have a little compact Leica Deluxe 109. Um, so it's just a tiny little camera, but um, takes a great photograph. Um, and then I've, I've, I've loaned different cameras through the last couple of years. So there's a couple of other um, photographs on there, but mostly is the Nikon. Oh, wow. And would you like... Like recommend specific lenses for each kind of images or is it just it really depends what, yeah depends on what you're taking um and and your budget so if i had a limitless budget i'd have all kinds of lenses but i don't which is why i ended up with the 24 to 70 mil because it covers a really good range of things um so yeah, it really depends on what you're photographing. And obviously the aperture is, can be different. So yeah, it's one of those things that you have to research depending on what you're, what you're actually photographing. Of course, and have you, well, I, uh, I'm also interested, we're interested to hear about, you know, if you ever tried to explore photos uh, through analog photography and have you ever edited analog photos? Is that like uh, something that, you don't touch or uh, do you ever edit uh, photos that you have taken with an analog camera or? 
Yeah, so that's that's a really great question, actually. So I started obviously with analog, and um, my first experience of photography was with analog cameras. And uh, last year, I bought myself an Olympus OM10, um, but it had a problem with the shutter, and then we kind of fell into this year and things went weird and um, I have just had it fixed. So it's now fully functioning. It's just a 35 millimeter um, film camera. So hopefully over the next 12 months, I will learn how to use that or, you know, start taking photographs with that. And um, yeah, we'll see. Watch this space on that one, I think. Amazing. And do you, uh, for, I mean, for example, for some photographers, editing an analog photo is kind of like, a sacred thing that you you're not allowed to do so uh would you ever you know consider editing the photos in lightroom um hmm. i'm not sure i think i'm probably a bit of a purist on that i think with an analog camera you take the photo that was half of the joy i mean my first cameras were all analog and that was half of the fun of them was that you never quite knew if it was well back then i never quite knew if it was going to be a good photo or not um so I don't know. Again, ask me maybe in another six months and I'll let you know. <laughs> and then Emma in the chat asks, how do you still come up with ideas for floral photography? Oh, gosh, just keeping an eye open all the time. Inspiration from anywhere and everywhere. I can, you know, see something when I'm out and about and think, oh, that'd be really nice. I'll try and have a create or interpret that in my own way, create something inspired by that. Um, I don't know. It's, sometimes it does feel like after eight years posting on Instagram, you're just churning out a little bit of the same stuff, which is possibly why I post a bit less than I used to. Um, but then I'm always I'm following different people and I'm inspired by so many different things and I want to try new things and improve things that I've tried before. So, you know, I think it's, it's just a a process if I really enjoy I really enjoy a flat lay clearly um, there's quite a few of them as you scroll up and down my gallery um, and I'm always looking to just improve on how I did it maybe the lighting wasn't right you know maybe areas like this photo here maybe some areas are overexposed and you know is there a way I could edit that better is there a way I could shoot that better so I think it's yeah it's challenging yourself as much as anything for me because it's a personal Instagram account. Um, I, I like a challenge. I learned, I taught myself last year how to um, create uh, cinema graphs in Photoshop just because I wanted to really. Um, but again, that's something I think I could improve on. I'm not, I've done a couple, but not really very well. And maybe I could make them better. And yeah, so, and finding time. That's the other yeah. thing. There is not always the time to learn these new things. That is so true. And just before we went live, we were just having a little chat and you mentioned that um, you used to do photography years ago and then stopped and then took it back up. And so what do you find differently now compared to how you used to do it? Um, I suppose when I used to do it, it was more, uh, it wasn't really so much for work. I used to do it more as a, uh, personal record and um the spontaneity of it i've always loved the spontaneous photography and i think now obviously i don't look at it that way i don't look at it in quite the same way because everything has to be planned i have to work around the weather i have to be able to produce reliable images for clients and not i've had to streamline my process i suppose where it used to be just oh i'll play with this and i'll point and shoot um, now I have to do it a lot more methodically. Yeah, no, definitely. There, it has to be, um, you know, time spent, especially if you're going to charge for your work as well and, and know how long each thing takes. And, you know, it's, it's getting really methodical. It is, it is. But then, you know, there are great things about photography now. When you have a digital camera, obviously you can take several photos and choose the best one, which when you're using an analog, you can't. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we didn't have a digital camera at all when my eldest was born. So seeing how things have changed since we were shooting on film when she was tiny to now, obviously my youngest, we have a million and one photographs of her because you can just point and click. So there are some really great things about modern photography. Yeah. I think I, we have here Gareth also asking about Julia's visual identity and how it was formed. Uh, I believe we also kind of talked about this before we went live and I we would love to hear about your inspiring story and how you, you began your passion into photography, if you can share that with us. 
Absolutely. So, um, I sort of, I fell into it this time, um, is probably the best way of putting it. When my youngest was born, she she's eight now, um, I signed up to Instagram because somebody had recommended it to me and I took part in a photo a day project where we were just given a word and you would take a photograph inspired by that word or a small short sentence. Um, and it just helped me think of something that was outside of being a mum to my three children, um, but to think creatively about how you could take a photograph that wasn't going to be like every other photograph posted on that day. Um, so I used to post to Instagram daily. This is, oh, it was a very different platform eight years ago. Um, and gradually through that, I started working, I tried working as an influencer for a while, but it's, it's not really my cup of tea. Um, and then I found that actually, I was being approached by brands to take photographs for them or maybe shoot locations and it sort of snowballed from there and now I'm at a point where um, I work with quite a lot of small local businesses. Um, I really like a small business so having been a small business owner for the last 12-15 years um, and yeah I'm just I'm really passionate about taking images that represent the brand and what they stand for. Obviously my portfolio and my Instagram page represent me, um, but you know, adapting that to suit someone else's brand, I, I find that really enjoyable. And then um, two of my favorite things are in your Instagram, Julia. Um, one of those is a, the picture that you have of the Christmas tree. And the other is the picture above, which is beachy head in Yay. your spawn. <laughs> like, me spawn. So seeing this just makes me, oh gosh, I love it. Um, and so it'd be really great to see you editing today and show us some of your techniques Absolutely. and your process. So if I pop over to Lightroom, there we go. Um, I've actually put this one in here because I, I, don't, I must have known that you would like to have this one. Um, wow. So let's have a quick look at this. So this is I, it, I, this was actually a camera that I had loaned from, um, taken on a camera I'd loaned from Leica. Um, really lovely camera. Um, but I was playing about with how it worked and how to expose the images. So what I've got here is um, slightly underexposed. It was obviously end of the day, sunset. Looking away from the sun, the sun's sort of behind me on this one. I'm not as close to the cliff edge as it looks. I should say it had a zoom lens. So I was standing quite a long way back because these cliffs are not the safest. No. Um, so yeah, what I do with every single photograph. So talking about earlier, we were saying about how images sit together. I start every single one of my edits with a preset that I created. Um, it's a really basic preset and I've just called it starter because you know that made sense um, so what it does it just adds oh, wow. a little bit of an edit to every photograph which is the same edit um, which kind of starts me off on every photograph now obviously because I say I've underexposed this the first thing I'm going to need to do is turn it up a little bit so we can see what we've got in terms of information on the photograph um, I do like a blue, but when I'm capturing a sunset, I think in my mind, for some reason, a sunset is going to be warm. So what I've done on this photograph, um, when I was editing it first, is I, I'm just turning up the highlights so that we're somewhere slightly warmer, enhancing the pinks. I like to play with the colors a little bit. And Eastbourne is known as the Sunshine Coast, of course. So. It is. I mentioned that earlier. It, it, yeah. yeah, it is. I don't know if it's still the case, but we had the most sunlight hours per year yeah. for quite a long time. So I think that's why. Um, yeah, there we go. And then I quite like a saturated um, sunset. Um, so I might just turn up some of the colours that are in here already. Just a little bit. I mean, I don't, I'm not doing anything to extremes. I maybe just turn things up a tiny bit. Maybe turn those down. So I like to play a lot with, as I say, the colors. This is kind of light and colors. It's probably the, the main focus of my edits. Um, 
we just check the crop on that. I actually managed to get the lighthouse almost in the middle there. Um, and for me personally, it's, it's really good seeing you edit this photo um, as I have this exact photo hanging up upstairs. But shamefully, I was playing too much with the vibrance and I was trying to make the lighthouse pop at the time with the red and the white and the red. And yeah. then with this, this is a much softer um, feel to it. It makes me want to edit that image now. <laughs> have another go, go for it. The, the thing with the lighthouse is that obviously we know it's red and white, but at this time of day it doesn't really look red and white because yeah. the sun has already dropped behind the cliff, so you can't, you don't really get that light on it. I mean, 10 minutes earlier it would have been a lot different, but then you get awkward shadows. Um, with a photo like this, so I quite often find with, because I like shooting that last light of the day, that either the sky is slightly overexposed or that the bottom of the frame is slightly underexposed. So I, like, I do like to use um, a bit of a graduated filter and then just maybe even that out a little bit. Because I do, I like to see the detail at the bottom of the frame as much as the detail at the top. I know that, you know, some images look great with a, a darker area, but for me, I quite like to see what's going on. But maybe we'll just take those shadows down a tiny bit. I like to see a bit more of the sea. Maddie, was your was your this the same image? Is was it taken at the same hour more or less? Or mine? No, mine was in the morning. It was a really it was a really bright day. The oh. sea was so blue. It was one of those, you know. Um, but again, I, as I said, I think I just I saturated that image so badly. It's so so blown out. It's just so yeah. It's funny looking at this. I'm like, oh dear, I need to. Do <laughs> <laughs> and um, there's a question from James in the chat, and I don't know what this is, so please fill me in, Natalie, if you know, and then Julie, if you know. Um, James says, was this shot in the bus hour? It, does that mean busy hour? What do you mean bus hour? Is that a thing? Don't is that, is it, are we talking blue that, after gold? I don't know. Uh, maybe is that another... Oh, blue. Blue. I guess you just... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this, is, um, this is literally as the sun was dipping over the horizon. So yes, we're just crossing from gold to blue, um, which is why it's a lot cooler than it would have been five minutes earlier. I can see Gareth and Sean laughing in the chat. <laughs> it's also <laughs> correct. It happens to the best of us, you know. <laughs> you could create a new term for it. That's interesting though. Honestly, <laughs> I didn't know. I was thinking, I better ask because it might be a thing. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, no yeah. worries, James. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, that's pretty much how I would edit there. I think you could go on for hours just tweaking a tiny bit um, mm. and pulling, maybe pull the exposure down a little bit. And actually, we could play up here with a little bit of texture, maybe. So, Juliet, have you ever worked with um, stock imagery for skies? Like, say, for example, um, the clouds weren't exactly right when you took the image and you might want to add more cloud into an image or change it. Have you, have you gone that far? No. No, I, I think um, I'm just about OK now with editing colour. For a long time, I was very much uh, the photo is as you see it. Again, this is going back to being a purist with analogue photography. I would take the photo and then do really minimal edits because I like it to stay as I saw it. Um, colour, I've kind of got more um, accepting of colour edits. Um, I think, again, you see a lot of them on Instagram these days and on any kind of social media. People change the colours a lot. But introducing an area of something that wasn't there, um, it's not really my style. I have no problem with other people using them, but for me... Sure. You know, you know, it's kind of, it kind of relates to a question that Jackie's asking. She was asking if um, if you edit if you edited the photos in the beginning before posting them on Instagram. And I know that Instagram right now, um, of course, long time ago they provided us with these filters, but now you can use uh, applications that are you know outside of the Instagram. And so, do you, do you, do you use to edit the photos before posting them on Instagram in the beginning? Um, in the beginning, I so. <laughs> in my naivety, when I downloaded Instagram a long time ago, I, it was a photo editing app as far as I was concerned. I didn't even realize there was a community on there. And it wasn't until a couple of years after that, that I bought my first DSLR and actually really looked at editing because I think the better quality of the photo, the more you need a decent edit on it. Um, and I've used Lightroom since then. And I have used it on every photograph you see online has been through Lightroom. 
Occasionally, it might have a filter from another app, um, just because I like to, again, I like to know what's around. I like to play with them. I like to be aware of what's on the market. Um, but everything goes through Lightroom first. I really like the way that you can, I mean, this photograph doesn't need it, but quite often with a, if I'm photographing something that requires very straight lines, I like the way you can adjust everything in Lightroom, as well as editing the photo, rather than having to switch through several different editing suites. Of course, it's just like, I, I totally agree with you because when I do take photos, uh, I also use Lightroom just to kind of like set the mood because sometimes the camera might, might change the colors or, you know, like the exposure is not enough. So I always use Lightroom to kind of set the moment where I, that the moment I took the picture at and how I felt actually. So I kind of like mix feelings and, you know, yeah. visual, uh, so yeah. Yeah, I think that's what I'm saying. I think that that's when when I edit, I'm almost trying to get back to what I saw, exactly, rather than what the camera sees, because it's it's not always exactly what you see. So yeah, no, I get that. And it's good to see your preset there, Julia, um, because everyone has a different process when they go to edit their images. And for me, I like to make sure that I um, block out time to do everything in kind of one go. I don't edit after every image anything that I take, I set like some time, make a big cup of tea, get a big chocolate muffin, sit there and I just go through all of the images. Is that the kind of thing that you do? Or is it like, as you go? Yeah, no, I, I would, um, hmm. it's a little bit like every time, I've, so this evening I might have taken five or six photographs that are worth editing, but I will do a batch edit and then I'll just do little selective edits on each one so that they sit together well. I'm actually, I'm working on my laptop today, so I don't have all my presets on here, but on my main computer, I have a set of presets, which are, I have a landscape preset. I have a still okay. life preset because the, the still life in particular, you can be fairly confident will come out a similar color to the one that you took the last time, um, as long as I'm using the same light conditions. So yeah, I always have, there's a starter preset, which involves usually a little bit of, um, I like a bit dehaze a little bit, and then to brighten the whites and the highlights. Um, and then there's a usually a preset that goes with either a landscape or a, a architecture or an interior. And then as a, yeah, just individual tweaks so that they all sit quite happily. I'm a big fan of um, this function here, having your reference photo. Um, I use this a lot, so I will quite often have, um, anyway, let me put that one in there, and then we'll go for, I mean, it can be a completely different photo, this happens to be of the same location, but because I want might want them to sit happily together on Instagram, I'll edit this photograph in a way that sits nicely, obviously at the moment this one's really high contrast where the one that I've already edited isn't, um, so I'll find a way to edit it so that it would sit comfortably in the same gallery as the other one. That image is beautiful with the grass bank there. This, yeah, thank you. This is, a, this is an earlier morning one, the sun's in a different place, it's just off to the side here. It's probably, I'm not sure what time of year I took it, it's probably a winter um, morning because the sun obviously moves depending on the time of year. Um, so yeah, but we get these amazing sea mists, which it's hard to resist really. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but that one, I mean, I would, I would edit that one probably slightly differently. So if we come back over here. Start again with that one. And then I think actually, This one's going to need a little bit more of a selective edit because of the difference in exposure across it. Mm. I also quite like the brush, which maybe not so much on this because it's a large area, but I quite like to, if you want to do a strange shape rather than a graduated filter that goes across half the frame. So I use, when I'm using the brush, I'm quite often auto masking. So it's only actually doing the part of the frame. If there's a definite line that you can follow, um, I'm only actually covering the part of the frame that I want to rather than covering the whole thing. 
And I think there's a question from Sanjana in the chat about um, how did you get to photographing architecture against floral? <laughs> Just because I like to try everything. Um, again, it's another one of those things I probably fell into it. Um, when I started Instagramming, as I say, because I was doing this prompt and it would be vastly different prompts. So you're sort of encouraged in a way to photograph everything. Um, and I've never really been very good at refining that. I just like to photograph everything. Um, in a previous life, I worked as an estate agent and I was their photographer. So I think photographing property and interior has just been a part of my photography journey for so long that I, I do it without even consciously thinking about it. Um, yeah, I, yeah. Florals, I like florals, I like gardening. I think I just like everything. There's no problem with that at all. <laughs> and um, how does your editing process change then for a floral image? Because you can see here that we're looking at the sunset and you've got that beaut you know, the beautiful colors. Um, you know, how would you look to do something similar? So, if we go with this one, um, I'm gonna come back into a single shot. Okay. Go back to my starter. So this is in my studio in the garden. Um, I think with this, I would probably, it's almost too bright. So I, I was mentioning before we came online, I, one of the things I like about still life is that you can really play with photography and um, camera settings in a way that's controlled, where quite often if you're photographing landscapes or architecture, you're more time limited or there are people around. And um, I think because in the studio, obviously I can control everything. I can work on a day when the light is right. Um, I don't have to worry too much about people interrupting me because it's specifically for taking photographs of this space. Um, so yeah, I don't, it can play around a bit more with the camera settings. I quite like the high contrast in this particular kind of photograph, so I don't really play with that too much. I am going to just take this out. I have a hook on the wall, which is really useful for hanging things on, but it doesn't always look great in the back of a photograph, so we'll just, we'll just take that out. So my computer's going a little bit slow. There no, we, we, notice, we notice in your photographs as well that there's always a link between the objects. Like for example, the flowers here, the, um, the closet, uh, there's always like this kind of link in all the objects. I don't know if you, if that's just pure randomness or if you actually set up all these, all these objects together. It's, it's kind of deliberate with a still life. I like there to be a balance in the frame. So rather than just having, there's a bit of pink here, I think it complements, I mean, the, this is the furniture I have in the studio. So it's always kind of like this, but I do like there to be a way that your eye can travel through the frame, a link between different props. Um, I don't tend to do a, a real, a vast amount of editing on the still life because as I say you can control the camera settings so quite often I find that they come off the camera not better necessarily but they're, they're closer to how I would like to see them anyway um, because I'm using slow shutter speed quite often I will desaturate a little bit when you're using a slow shutter speed it, it records more color so obviously the photograph will be a little bit more colorful than it would have been otherwise so I might just take that out a tiny bit but you know minimal amount um, and this photograph I think it's just a little bit cool maybe so we'll turn up the temperature a tiny bit but it's other than that I'll just check very slow. I'm very sorry. I am plugged into the internet. <laughs> Check if no the worries. is all right. There we go. So there's not too much grain on here because I've set the shutter speed slow and the ISO is low. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all I would do with that. And then it's good to go. Lovely colours. Really lovely. Thank you. Yeah, I, I like, as I say, I like colour a lot, but not vibrant. It's mm. just not my style. I like it to be subtle. Mm. 
Well, I was going to ask you what your biggest no-no is, but I think that that'll be it, right? The vibrant, bright colour, green. I really struggle. Green and orange, actually, I struggle with. Um, I like both, but as a you know, editing, I find them more tricky. Um, but yeah, and and high, really high contrast, like a really strong light and shadow. I find that quite difficult. I know this is fairly high contrast, but it's in a a controlled way if you've got bright sunlight I find that really difficult to photograph well mm. and we are just over halfway now time is flying so if any of you have questions for Julia get them into the chat we're chatting in Behance so it's behance.net forward slash live um so yeah, any other questions that you have for Julia um, and Julia you know what would be your ideal project if someone could say you know you've got all the money for this one project what would it be oh gosh Oh, so many things. Um, fields, anything that involved landscape and fields, I would be there in a second. I, I'm a real outdoor person. Um, so anything travel as well, although obviously this, I haven't even left Sussex since, well, I took my daughter to university, but we've not stayed anywhere at this year. We've just been in Sussex. So, you know, I've got itchy feet at the moment. So travel and landscape, I'd be there. No. And um, Sanjana asks a question, um, how did you study photography? Um, did you work for the National Trust, Sanjana? No, no, I love the National <laughs> Trust though. Um, yeah. that's, that's just always have done. Um, no, I, when I was at university, in fact, before that, when I was at college, I did a photography course, which was extracurricular. Um, but back then, I mean, it was, it was film photography and it involved both the photography and developing the films. And then when I went to university, I, I did the same, um, sort of an extended version of that. Um, and then I largely photographed just, as I say, as personal projects and um, not necessarily as work. Um, but I've always loved to photograph ever since. I can remember when I was little rifling through photo albums and boxes of old photographs that my grandparents had. I've still got a lot of them now. Um, so I, I think I've just always been interested in how you can capture a moment in time and it be preserved on a piece of paper. I like a print, I have to say. <laughs> and um, I had a question also about Lightroom, Julia. Uh, you did mention that you always work with a preset that you worked previously on. So when you do take the photos, uh, I believe you always change that preset or is it like... Uh, yeah, I, I, kind of, I would layer. Um, so there is, there's a preset which I would put on all images if I was editing from scratch. And then I have a preset that works with, so I do quite a lot of white backgrounds and there's a preset that works with them. I have one that I use for um, bright landscape. I have quite a few presets on my computer just because it saves a lot of time if you can do the bulk of the edit without having to focus on individual settings. Um, and then I can just tweak it so that they sit comfortably together. And is there, uh, is do you have any kind of recommendation on how to create this kind of preset? Does it depend on the photography that you take or? Yeah. So mine are, um, I've set them up because they go with the kind of photographs that I do. So my camera, uh, it has quite a long lens and there's always an element of um, distortion and vignetting on it. So I have set up a preset which takes that out straight away. Um, Setting up a preset is really easy. I mean, I can run through if that would be helpful. So on your panel on the left, where it says presets here, on the plus button, you can create a preset um, and it will then open the corrections you've done on the photograph that you've got. So you would start to edit a photograph. When you get to a point that you want to save that edit as a preset, go into the preset creation, and then you just check which of the settings you want to be um, included. I also learned recently, brilliant, that there's a, an adaptive preset you can do for ISO because quite often my ISO can be vastly different depending on what I'm photographing. Um, so you can have a responsive preset which will set, for example, noise reduction depending on what your ISO is. Um, 
So yeah, we just check in here, we give it a name. So start a B. Um, and it will, if you press create here, it will save all the functions that you've just, um, all the edits you've just done on your photograph. So the next photograph that you open, when you begin, you just start with the preset you saved. And then all those edits will be applied to the new photograph and you don't have to do them again. Nice. It's so easy when it's done like that, hey? It's so good. <laughs> so good. <laughs> So how do you go about culling the images that you don't want to use? Because I'm sure that when you're out on a, on a shoot, you're going to take loads of images. Yeah, so um, I think practice is a really big factor in that. Uh, I used to keep a lot of photographs and now I've, I've managed to get it down to there'll be the photograph that I think works best and then maybe a spare or possibly two, depending on what the client's requirements are. Um, but I take a lot less than I used to as well. I think eyeing up the photograph you're going to take, making sure that it works before you take it, takes an awful lot of time out of um, getting rid of excess later. Um, and working on which photographs work together. So if I'm photographing an interior, quite often I'll have the whole room shot and then there'll be a part of the room or a different angle, maybe a bit of detail and making sure that you've got a family of images that work well together. And then the rest, you don't really necessarily need. I'm quite ruthless when it comes to getting rid of the excess. You have to be, otherwise you'd end up with a storage issue. That's very true. Yeah, you have to be ruthless for sure. And um, there it was a question from Gareth who asks, are you an all-weather photographer? I am. I am. I have my favourites, but yes, yes, I'll photograph anything at any weather. Nice. It's got to be a clear, crisp morning. I love it when it's cold outside, but the sun's shining. Yeah. And, oh, it's just beautiful, especially down, uh, down in Sussex. Absolutely. Oh, yes. And in winter, I have to say in winter, I'm a bit more of a fan of the mornings because they tend to be at a bit more friendly hour rather than being at, you know, five o'clock. You can still get a decent photograph at nine o'clock in the morning. Mm. Um, so, yeah, crisp winter mornings are great. Oh, definitely. And so the questions then about your uh, social media and how you're using that for your photography. Um, where did you start? Like, how did you uh, decide what images to show and what look and feel? Because as we as we spoke about earlier, your images on your Instagram are a little bit different to your portfolio. So how did you decide? Yeah. Um, it's, 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 a, it's ever evolving. I think in the beginning, I posted everything. I mean, I would... I would post more than once a day, which is a real no-no now, mm -hmm. but I would. Um, and I think it just evolves over time. So I've gone through phases where I'm particularly interested in one set of colors. It quite, if you scroll through my gallery, the colors do tend to change, not only through season, but also through what I'm interested in at the time. Maybe I'm trying to perfect a certain kind of edit and I'm carrying that across uh, different subjects and trying to make them sit happily. It's kind of my practice ground, I suppose you would call, for the professional shots, which have to be more reliable. Um, so yeah, the, at the moment, it's very floral. I think I need to come back out of that stage, but it's it's been, because it's been such a strange year um, and, I enjoy photographing florals. I enjoy sitting in fields and the escapism of it. That's kind yeah. of what I focused on because it, it it's my Instagram has always had an element of escapism. There aren't many people in there because as you said earlier, I like to leave a photograph so that the viewer can imagine themselves in it or feel how it felt rather than it being, here's a photo of this person. I'd like to you know, think that people can imagine being in that field on that evening when it's warm and it's quiet and you know um so yeah but it, as I say it's a constant change it has to be interesting to me if I'm posting stuff for the sake of posting it yeah. it's not interesting and I'm not enjoying it but if I'm posting something that I'm enjoying photographing it keeps me more engaged I suppose with social media I, mean, I must be honest though I have had a little bit of a break recently we've had a very busy period off offline as it were um as i say my eldest has just gone to university so i haven't posted much on social media i've got the photographs i just haven't had the time for social media 
Yeah, it's finding the time, as you said earlier on. But as you say, if you're enjoying it, it doesn't feel like work. Um, and even though they're personal projects, it all contributes to you know the, the work and being hired and all of that as well. So it all goes into the you know the right way. Um, and I think one of the things that some of our creatives have shared through Adobe Live recently is that lockdown has encouraged them to revisit old projects and perhaps change things. Have you been doing that? Absolutely. So there's there's one particular field. If you know my work on Instagram, you'll know it. There's one particular field that I go to every single year. It has um, the most amazing wildflowers and I have photographed it every year for about the last five years. It's different every year. Um, so yes, I did. I find a kind of peace in knowing that this is something I've done before, but it's slightly different and maybe I'll edit it slightly differently. And yeah, there is a comfort to going back to the familiar, definitely. And there's loads of questions coming in right now. Um, do you know, this is so, this is so true. Sujana says, uh, have you ever photographed Q, like Q Gardens? Perfect. <laughs> No, that is on the list. And I have made a plan every year for the last three or four years to go there at certain times of year. And then again, I made it this year and then we're all stuck at home and it's like, I haven't made it again. So yes, I will one day, I'll make it to Q. <laughs> oh, definitely. Um, there's, there was actually an interesting question also in the chat. Um, would you ever consider doing portrait photography or is that something that... Oh, an interesting I do it. I do it with, um, I take photographs of friends and family, but it's not something that I've ever really looked at doing commercially because I like candid photographs. I like to capture people doing what they're doing and being themselves. Um, not so keen on any kind of forced, posed. Um, I mean, I know it has its place, but when I'm photographing, I like it to be sort of, um, without them really being aware that I'm doing it, I like to stand back and just capture people being themselves. So yeah, if anyone likes that kind of photograph, absolutely, I would do it. But it tends, I tend to get asked more for the, you know, will I photograph a wedding, which is really not my cup of tea. <laughs> of course, because when you do, you know, take a picture, I always believe that you're telling a story. You're not just taking this picture of a flower or something. You're you, you, it's, there's a storytelling behind every photo that you took. So this is absolutely fascinating. And yeah, I think that's what I strive for. I think I, I'm, I'm more interested in the story than I am in the, I mean, I, I like the technical side of photography, but I'm more interested in the, the moment. And I believe that you know, obviously the, the current situation have all impacted us and impacted our work. Our work. Did you feel that, of course, you felt limited because all your photos are kind of outdoorsy. So um, is there anything that you can share with us, you know, that uh, that you did differently, for example, in the situation where there's a lockdown and you were you able to take photos? Were you able to kind of explore a different kind of path and photography? Yeah, so I think um, it's forced me to look at my local area more. I mean, and immediately local i know i photograph sussex a lot but as in a five mile radius uh, the places that i am often and finding ways to photograph them um i may not have put it all online but i have been playing with different locations and how to photograph them which for me has been so i think with photography not everything has to be for public consumption sometimes the projects that you are working on where you're learning are almost more important than the ones where you're earning, if you see what I mean. I think for me, it has to be a journey. You have to always be learning something, otherwise I, I lose interest a little bit. Definitely. I can really see you uh, photographing rye. You know, those really <laughs> old, old streets and the really quintessential British, uh, you know, buildings, love it. Yes, yeah. I, I do have a lot of photos of rye. <laughs> For oh, those of us who live out, uh, outside, can you kind of describe to us uh, where, wh how is that scenery is? <laughs> what, where I am? What, uh, what Rye. Maddie, Maddie mentioned. In Rye. So Rye is, um, it's an old um, 
port town on the Sussex coast. It's not quite on the coast anymore, actually. Uh, there's a river that runs into it, but it, it has a long history of smuggling and intrigue. Lots of um, timber clad buildings in white and um, it's beautiful, right? Um, mm. You just have to look it up online and you'll see why. Yeah. There's quite a few photographs on my Instagram which are actually taken in right. Funnily enough, I was going to put one on here for today and then I thought, oh no, it's a cliche. I won't put right on. <laughs> oh no, it's yeah, so <laughs> yeah, there's like, imagine like houses with flowers um, up them and cobbled streets and... Oh, Mermaid <laughs> Street. The cobbled hill that goes up Mermaid Street is just yeah. the most... There, there yes, is there the there. I mentioned that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sandrina, so if it's close to Hastings. Uh, not yeah. far. It's yeah. It, it's that it way, though, definitely. It's about fifteen miles, something like that. Not maybe not even that much because the roads in Sussex, unfortunately, tend to be slow. So things yeah. are closer together than you think they are. But it's probably about a twenty-minute drive between the two. Yeah, nice, nice. So, what kind of projects are you working on now, then, Julia? Like, what kind of things are you looking to do going ahead? Gosh, so um, I. Work-wise, I've got, you know, bookings for more uh, holiday homes. I love doing a holiday home interiors and um, some products. I've got a, a beautiful children's clothing brand that I'm working with at the moment. Um, personal project, I am determined to get this autumn winter photography thing done. I've always found that season really hard because obviously the flowers go and I love the flowers. Um, so I'm going to... I'm challenging myself to photograph the colours of autumn and winter this year, maybe a little bit more successfully than in previous years. It's good to get the colours. I mean, all of the colours of autumn. I'm just, I'm, I'm loving the season change after a really long summer. Yeah. Um, you know, it's nice to have the change, isn't it? And um, did you think that you will uh, move into some portrait photography, do you think? Or was that something that you said that you, you as you say, you're capturing the moment could you move there? Or I mean, it's, it's something that I do anyway, but mainly people that I know, mainly family and, and such. Um, I don't know. I, I wonder if I'm just not quite confident enough with the portrait photography. I feel like there's an awful lot to learn technically um, if you want to do portraits, interior portraits. Um, and I'm just much more comfortable capturing people being themselves. So I don't know that I really want to explore that much further at the moment but um one thing we sort of touched on was the analog photography i would really quite like to experiment with that as well over winter yeah see what happens nice it's so good for, for wellness to get outside and to you know to have the walks and and capture all of these things and everyone's mentioning in the chat some beautiful areas to you know to take photos angus mentions camba sands beach yes. when it's quiet it's got great light um and a few comments about brighton as well um yeah, so yeah I, you're I really want to visit right now i'm actually really excited <laughs> to go out to head over there you know once this all calming yeah. down we should have a little meet. We'll have to have a photo meet and go and do some of the Sussex coast. Canberra is beautiful. You're right. Absolutely. Um, I tend, I've done an awful lot of going further east because I think um, we have family slightly further east. So the coastline going along, I know quite well, right up to Dungeness, which I absolutely love Dungeness. It's like Marmite. You love it or you hate it. I happen to love it. Um, if you don't know Dungeness well, it's it's. I think it's actually designated a desert. There's, it's just a shingle beach with lots of. It's like an old boat graveyard, um, lots of rundown boats and yeah. It's it's in, and the nuclear power station, which isn't so photogenic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, but yeah, going the other way. I mean, I don't really get much further than Berlin Gap and Seaford and Cookmere Haven. Obviously, that's a brilliant place to photograph. Um, but yeah, so maybe I should try exploring a bit more to the west now. Yeah. And um, you've shown us some amazing photos today. Um, I think I know the answer to this. But um, when, when you look at your portfolio or your Instagram, where what's your favourite image? Oh. oh, that one of Beachy Head. No way. Yeah, it is. Ah, I right. like a lot of photographs. I love this this one that we just edited um, yeah. because it's home and it's been home for the last 20 something years. And, you know, it, it just is 
a, such a big part of my life. I'm up there quite a lot. I have a, a dog and we walk the dog all over the place, but um, there's something about a sea view. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. So which one would you have picked? Just out of interest, which one would you have picked? <laughs> I would have picked the flowers in the fields. It was really yeah. lovely. They would have been a second. Let me can't wait. Let me see. I don't know where they are. What these kind of, yeah, they would be my second. This kind of thing. Yeah. Um, this is my field. This is the project. So I, these are the flowers that I photograph every year, just to see um, the changes. Some years there's really long grass. Some years there's none. That I just find it fascinating how it changes, but stays the same. I actually have a favorite from your website, though. It was a birthday cake, I think, with uh, with candles. Is that? Let me see. Oh, okay. I know. I think. <laughs> I guess because yeah. I don't know. I just loved it. I love the colors over there. I'm not sure if I've on uh, this one. Yes, I love yeah. it. I yeah, know. that was a lucky shot actually, because capturing smoke can be really tricky. Um, <laughs> Sorry, go on. No, oh, sorry. No, I was just saying, of course. Yeah, that's why it was like, it was really, it caught my attention, you know, the smoke and, and like, I feel like it's just a composition by itself, you know, it's, um, it's beautiful. Yeah, thank you. No, that really was lucky because it just, <laughs> yeah. If you've ever tried to photograph birthday candles, you'll understand that trying to blow out a, a, some of them, not all of them, and the smoke go the right way without you blowing it sideways. It's, yeah. So that was just one of those yeah. moments of, ah. <laughs> I've got it. <laughs> oh, because there's actually the three three candles that. So were you the one who? Okay. Yeah. So I had a remote shutter in one hand, and I'm standing just off, and I sort of blew across the <laughs> side of the cake, and then just had to wait for the smoke to come back and go up. But Amazing. yeah, I do love a challenge. <laughs> I love it. It's funny the positions we find ourselves in to try and yes. get the right shot, just holding your breath. And yeah, do they? Yeah. That and the arc of chaos that's going on behind that you can't see in the photograph, but there'll be stuff <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> totally. And we're nearly at time now. Like, it, it's flown by. It's been really lovely today. Um, is there any kind of tips that you would share with, for anybody that wants to get into this type of photography, um, whether it be your landscapes or you know the floral type? What, what tips would you give? Oh, God, just experiment. Just go for it. Don't worry about whether you're doing it right or wrong, because some of the best lessons you learn come from the mistakes you make. So, you know, just have a go. If something isn't going right, learn to recognize when you should step away. Um, mm -hmm. Not everything goes well. I mean, I still have photo shoots where I get halfway through and I think I've got to stop for an hour and come back to this because it's just not going well. Um, and persevere. Nothing comes easily. You have to put the time in and it has to be consistent time. Quite often I'll sit, or not so much now, but when I was learning how to edit photos, I would sit um, my laptop with watching whatever I was watching on telly or um, and just play with what things do in Lightroom and Photoshop. I love Photoshop, but it still baffles me a bit. Um, just playing with what things do and how they change the photograph because you can always reset. As long as you've got your original image, you're not losing anything. Just play with it. And there was a question that came up and I want to check who it was from because they, uh, there was an observation that you were using Lightroom Classic. And the question was, it was from Gareth. Um, is there a reason why you were using Classic over the other Lightroom? Um, I find it more user-friendly just for me. I think because I've used Classic all the way through, um, my brain is just wired that way and I find it more intuitive. I do use the other version. I have it on my phone actually quite often, put a quick edit through on a photo just to see how it's working. Um, but out of choice, I would go for classic. Yeah, it's just a, a habit, I suppose. Yeah, it's what you're used to. I totally get it. Sometimes it's easier to not change things. If you've got time to, to learn and, and spend the time, you know, changing it up, then definitely. But stick with what you know. Go yeah. with your, you know, your path. Hopefully. I kind of think it's working for me at the moment, therefore I'll stick with it. Yeah, it definitely is. Amazing. Cool. So we're at time. It is one o'clock. Um, it has been amazing. Um, Natalie, is there anything that you would like to... Uh, 
I don't know. I'm, I'm I'm very happy, you know, to hear you know photographers' instinct, you know, and how you take photos. I also I totally agree that you should play with it. You should work for it as, at the same time, and just go and have an experiment with all the tools you have, you know. And we're just uh, we're very grateful, you know, to have these tools right now available to us, you know, back that back then we couldn't have. Um, so yeah, thank you so much, Julia. You're so humble. You're so inspiring. Thank you for sharing everything with us. Uh, <laughs> I mean, honestly, you know, you you after after we, I'm sure that after the audience heard you speak, you know, they can actually relate your style in the photos with, with yourself. So thank you for you know sharing your personal stories, and thank you so much, Julia, uh, Maddie, sorry for having me next to you today. Um, I just want to thank everyone on the chat as well. We learned. A new word today, which is bus hour, aka blue hour. So, is that from yeah. Paris or I'm not sure? So, <laughs> um, and yeah, thanks for everyone who joined us. Uh, tune in, we're live every day from 12 to 1 uh, on Behance Live. Uh, yeah, thank you so much, everyone, and see you tomorrow. All right, everyone, bye. Thanks for joining. Bye. Bye. Thank you.